We're going to look at Noah's Ark. In 1957, there was an aerial survey of the Mount Ararat region, and a boat-like formation was found. It was 515 feet long, the same as 300 cubits, exactly the length the Bible says the ark is in Genesis 6:15. In 1960, an expedition was arranged by Turkish and American individuals who found nothing that they regarded as proof of it being a boat, but their conclusions were premature. In Genesis 8:4, the Bible says the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Notice the Bible says on the mountains of Ararat, not the mountain of Ararat. This shape is exactly where the Bible says the ark would be. It's actually 12 miles from Mount Ararat in the mountains of Ararat. In 1977, Ron Wyatt went to the site to do further investigation. Because the Turkish government would not allow excavation, Ron prayed that God would make a way to do so. In 1978, an earthquake better exposed the site. Compare these two images, before and after the earthquake. You can see the sides of the formation have literally fallen away. And because the earthquake better exposed the ark to greater, a greater degree, further detailed study was possible. Soil samples were taken and metal rivets were found, and these were analyzed in Galbraith Labs in Knoxville, Tennessee, and also Los Alamos National Laboratories, and the results were nearly identical. They found trace elements of metals that you don't normally find in nature. Soil samples were tested inside and outside the formation for organic carbon. Outside showed a 1.88 carbon content, and inside showed a 4.95% organic carbon content. Also, these before and after photos show how that removing two inches of topsoil from the sides of the formation reveal vertically banded and colored soil. The darker and lighter colored soils also have a different carbon content. They appear to be beams of prior living matter, like wood, that have melted into the soil over time. In this context, that would make them the ribs of a ship. In 1984, high-tech metal detectors were used on the site, and these showed distinctive metallic readings throughout the site. But most notably, the readings of metal were in a grid shape and produced 13 parallel lines the length of the whole object, indicating it was man-made. The results were replicated by other investigators. And there are more observations that lend evidence of prior structure. Ground penetrating radar scans took place between 1985 and 1987. Joe Rosetta, vice president of geophysical survey systems who supplied the scanning equipment, reviewed the subsurface radar scans. His conclusion, this is not a natural object. The reflections are occurring too periodic for it to be a natural type of interface. You'd never see anything like this in natural geology. Some human made the structure, whatever it is. Also, 15 anchor stones were found around the site, just like you might find around the Mediterranean Sea, only these were much larger with no water in sight. These could be suspended by ropes behind a ship to point the bow into rough seas. A smaller example from, the, from Israel is shown here. Other artifacts found in the area include drawings, such as this one. It shows a boat and eight people and a rainbow, a clear reference to the biblical story of the eight members of Noah's Ark. Also, a team has carried out electromagnetic resistance scans on the Ark, and you can see some of the evidence here of the structure underneath the soil. And what about mega floods? Could the earth once have been covered with water? Well, it's interesting that scientists say now that Mars was once covered with water. And while evidence is still being compiled, more and more facts are emerging about ancient mega floods on earth. Great Britain is now believed to have been carved away from mainland Europe by a mega flood event. These give far more plausibility to the account of a worldwide flood in Noah's day. And while meteorologists say that rain alone could not account for such a volume of water, 
Let's go back to the Bible. It says in Genesis, the rains descended and the fountains of the deep were opened up. This implies that great underground reservoirs of water were released geologically at the same time. So is the account of Noah's Ark true? 